mainly politicians. That's what the press has always been supposed to do. We're supposed to bother them. We're supposed to point out their lies. We're supposed to try to keep them straight, relatively straight. But when the fourth estate becomes the fifth column, you can have a president elected who was never qualified to be so much as a Secret Service agent. And by the way, I'll repeat that again. Barack Obama's past associations would have prevented him from being accepted into the FBI, let alone into the Secret Service. How come no one's ever talked about that back in a minute? No, there's no apology. There's nothing to apologize for. When, when, you, when you have a problem with the boat, you apologize the boat had a problem? No. There, <laughs> and there was no looking for any apology. No, you know, Joe I mean, Biden just... is, the, is a bigger lie, as big a liar, if not bigger, than Barack Obama. The man with those fake teeth. Every time I see him, I see a crazy man, another crazy man. Another crazy man. Crazy men, crazy women running the country. There's no apology? Mr. Biden, take out your earplugs and listen to the apology on the Savage Nation. Listen. It was a mistake that was our fault, and we apologize for our mistake. Uh uh, in your GPS, right, in GPS track, it is completely that you have penetrated to Iran through our water? I believe so. How was the Iranian behavior with you? You like the Iranian the behavior was fantastic while we were here. We thank you very much for your hospitality and your assistance. Uh, didn't you have a special problem? You, you no like problems, the special sir. falafel, American? This would be laughable if it was a cartoon, but it isn't. The United States Navy which once defeated Muslim pirates. In fact, I've told you the story before. The Marines actually were called Leathernecks. Do you know why? I told you the story many years ago. We had merchant ships plying the world's waters in the 1800s, the early 1800s, and uh, they were being attacked by Muslim pirates off the coast of Africa and in the Mediterranean. Off the coast of Africa, I believe. They needed special... Uh, Soldiers put on the uh, merchant ships to protect them, and they knew they were going to get into sword fights, so they put leather, thick leather bands around their necks to protect them in these man-to-man -man fights with swords. They were called leathernecks. That's the origin of the word leatherneck, the U.S. Marines. And so we've gone from that to this. From the Alpha to the Omega, the U.S. Navy has now been totally humiliated by this, by this group of friends of Valerie Jarrett and Barack Obama. Let's put it to you that way. You know the big J word was coming. Someone was going to say it. Those of you who know what I'm talking about, why, why go into this? Uh, you want to talk about this? We can. They had weapons. They could have used them. Why didn't they use their weapons to fight their way out of that? <clears throat> They're naval officers. This is not a cruise ship. You join the military, you're different than a civilian. You swear you're going to uphold the Constitution, you're willing to put your life on the line for it. They had heavy machine guns on that boat. They could have fought their way out of that. They could have called in for support. I mean, there was a mothership from which they came. The mothership couldn't have been more than a mile away. Why didn't the mothership come to their rescue and stand down the Iranians? Let's go to the next stage. Who is the captain of the American mothership of these boats? Why was she not told to defend these men who got into this trouble? Where was she? What was she doing? Who was the captain? Where was the captain? Who was the captain? Why did the captain go to the aid of these uh, men and this one woman who were captured? How could two boats go aground at the same time? Impo it's statistically impossible unless they were both sabotaged. It's that simple. Why did they fight their way out? Why did, Ker why did Kerry have an immediate congr self-congratulatory speech about himself, his diplomacy, and that creep with the long hair? Every time I see him, I want to break the screen. That creep, that creep with the long hair, the Secretary of Energy. Where'd that creep come from? Who is that creep of the secretaries? Of, of, uh, uh, during the hearings, he was sitting there with the hair hanging down. During the whole hearings, like a doll. Like a, oh, the whole thing disgusts me. The whole thing gets me really angry. Okay, well, here we are. Stocks plunge to go with it. And by the way, you say, oh, well, the stocks plunge separately? No, it was after Obama's insane speech last night. And the complete detachment of all of Congress from the world's problems, the stocks went down. Because nobody can believe that we have these people of such a low level running the whole world. Nobody can believe it.
Did you see the faces as he walked down the red carpet as though it was the Golden Globes? He looked like Sean Penn. Big smile. They couldn't get enough of him. They just couldn't wait to touch him. But this is not a rock star. It's not an entertainer. This is not a Spielberg movie. This is the man who was given the mantle of the United States of America, and he's put us in danger. He has wrecked the economy, whether you know it or not. You don't think so, because printing money is a very, very easy way to create a false sense of a recovery. It was used by FDR. It was used by Stalin. It was used by Hitler. Many, many governments have used a quantitative easing or printing money to give a false sense of a recovered economy. I, you don't understand it. I do. I know the basics, the basis of economics. What's the difference if the inflation is out of control and you don't know it? Inflation is not out of control. Go look at houses in New York, apartments in New York, and go look at uh, houses in Beverly Hills and tell me there's no inflation. You'll see there's real inflation. Real inflation. And uh, one day you'll come to understand it'll all come home to roost, probably the minute a Republican is elected. It'll all come crashing down and they can blame it on them. They could stand on the sidelines and say, you never had it so good while we were uh, since we were in office. That's coming next in the charade called American politics. We're going to move on. If you want to call on this, we have a few minutes left on it when I come back. Then we're going to move on to other subjects. The apology of the U.S. Navy. Were the boats sabotaged by a double agent in the Obama administration? And more right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Democracy does require basic bonds of trust between its citizens. It doesn't, it doesn't work if we think the people who disagree with us are all motivated by malice. It doesn't work if we think that our political opponents are unpatriotic or are trying to weaken America. Democracy grinds yeah. to a halt without a willingness to compromise. Oh, in other but words, we're wrong for seeing through you? We're wrong now for seeing the subversives at work. But we're not really wrong. We're really nice people. We're not really bad. When we see subversives subverting everything of any value in the country, suddenly, yeah, we're, we're really noble. We, we accept that you can look at us and call us subversives. But we're, really, we're bigger than you. Yeah. So, parallel universe. Ten lies Obama told during the, 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 the uh, address. I mean, that's so obvious. A child could see it. A child could see what he said. Everything was in, a, in another universe. Talks about space and Sputnik and about a science and how we didn't shrink from research and we built uh, uh, overnight a space program. And he doesn't add he destroyed the space program within the first two months of his administration. Two months of the, of the regime, he knocked out NASA. Didn't say that last night. Then he talks about the spirit of discovery in our DNA. His DNA? Well, I don't think the spirit of discovery is in his DNA. I think the spirit of subversion is in his DNA, that's for sure. Then he compares our spirit of discovery in one breath, Thomas Edison, the Wright brothers, and you hold your breath, George Washington Carver again. The... the and then he throws in Grace Hopper and Katherine Johnson to be PC. No one knows who they are, know what they did. Then he says, we're every immigrant and entrepreneur from Boston to Austin to Silicon Valley racing to shape a better world. No, my friend, it's every immigrant and entrepreneur that Silicon Valley is bringing in to lower their cost of doing business. It's I'm a cynical guy, i got to tell you. Maybe you're not as cynical as I am. And for that reason alone, you don't accept what I have to say. I understand that. I've been a cynic since I'm five years old. From the time I could first think and speak, I was cynical by what I saw going on in my little world. And I haven't been disappointed in my cynicism. Not yet. WMAL, John, go ahead, please. What do you make of the incident of the apology and the boats? Well, first off, the apology was an absolute crock. Uh, it never should have been said. never should have happened. Uh, second of all, as far as the boats go, if it, if in fact it was the RPBs, the riverine patrol craft, um, they are notorious for maintenance issues. That does not absolve the crew from... Well, John, hold on. That was the initial report that one of them broke down, and then we learned that was not the case. It was that their GPS on both boats went out at the same time, and both boats went aground uh, on Farsi Island. So it wasn't a, a, a breakdown. 
It was a, a navigational error. And if it's a navigational error, that would be the quartermaster and the uh, the OIC of those vessels. It's their responsibility. They've got to have the right charts, have the right geo coordinates put into the GPS, and all that has to be set up properly. Prior but, to John, according to a woman who called, whose husband is going to replace these crew members in the Gulf, the very same Gulf, they all know Farsi Island. It's the only large object in that entire body of water. It's well marked, and everyone knows where it is. So she couldn't understand how they could get a navigational error and go aground. She didn't say it didn't make any sense to her. Uh, no, that's not true. It depends on what geo cords you put into your unit when you get there. No, based no. on your have you, have you have you been in those John have you been in those waters yes sir I have I I am a former OIC of one of those units okay so you disagree with her it's easy to go aground on Farsi Island oh I'm not saying that by any stretch of the imagination it depends during your light off when you're spinning up those engines you're getting ready to pull out of that pier you do all your checks make sure everything mechanically is set up make sure your navigation systems are all squared away if they put in the wrong, the wrong inputs into their GPS for a different region, the GPS could be way, way off. Um, okay, let, let's not, say that. that means, how could both of them make the same mistake at the same time? Two patrol boats both make the same mistake. You've got the same guy doing both jobs at the same time. Absolutely. Okay, That's fine. The, so the guy, the guy made a mistake. It couldn't have been Iran jamming them. Yes, it's possible, uh, but now you're talking. All right, so because... let's let's talk about this. What mother kind of mothership did they come off? Was it a, na um, 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 a naval amphibious ship? No. Well, right now, what it appears is that they were transiting from Bahrain to Kuwait, where they where they normally operate out of. No, no. Wait, they were coming out of a la wait. Were they coming off a land base, or were they coming off a mothership? They should have been coming off out of Bahrain. So they were coming from a land. Base, in other words, a a yacht harbor. Yes. How far how far away is that from here? I mean, these are not long range vessels. They're not made for long range work. How far away was that? A hundred miles? Fifty miles? <laughs> uh, off the top of my head, don't get me lying. Um, it's been a long time. I retired in '09. That being said, um, they would have a ship that they would rendezvous with en route, which would be another amphib with a well deck. They'd pull in, gas up, and then get get out and go again. Uh, and okay, so the, but that wouldn't be more than a mile away, would it? It depends on what the actual distance was. Farsi Island is pretty much equidistant to both Kuwait and Bahrain, so looking at it on <clears throat> I understand, but the mothership that was waiting for them, which has a bay on it into which boats like this can be driven, couldn't have been very far away, could it? Uh, it could have been within 30, 40 100 miles, you know, it, yes, it could have, but no, it could. All right, but don't those ships have attack helicopters on them? I've been on those ships during a fleet week. They have attack helicopters on them, don't they? Some of them do, some of them don't. Um, some well, who, would, who would send them into an Iranian area without an attack helicopter? I mean, they're not a Mr. Rogers neighborhood going on an ice cream tour. Well, sir, this comes down to the ROE that, that they're being forced to operate under. Uh, and I'll be willing to bet money right now that the... M2 HBs, the 50 cals that they had on board, I'd be willing to bet you money they didn't even have ammo on board. Oh my God! Yeah. So it's another U it's another USS Cole under Bill Clinton when a uh, uh, a raft, in other words, blew the ship in half. The men didn't even have, didn't even have ammunition in their in their weapons, their personal weapons. That would be a fair assessment, sir. So here we are again, again, subversive academics running America and running and ruining the military. Well, thank you for your service, uh, John. I'm sending you government zero. There's a whole chapter called Zero Military, sadly to say. I wasn't wrong. Something's wrong with the picture. Anybody else have anything to add to this? Uh, State of the Union uh, speech, everyone's been playing it all day. We're going to play it tonight. I didn't get to this. This is the biggest story of the, yes, the State of the Union. The biggest story last night was not the liar in the White House. It was Haley. It was Haley, Nikki Haley, the new quizzling of the Republican Party. Nikki Haley attacked Republicans. In her rebuttal of Obama, she rebutted the Republican conservative wing. Could you believe this? She didn't rebut Obama. She rebutted the conservative wing of the Republican Party. This is the rebuttal speech from the so-called opposition party. How many years have I told you? 
It's a one-party system. How many years have I told you it's an oligarchy?